Hello, hello. So today I just wanted to go through my purchases from the San Francisco pen show as well as talk a little bit about it. Uh, I didn't actually end up buying any pens, but I have a couple to share with you anyway. I bought one before the show and also one after. So we'll have to take a look at that. I always think I'm going to come home with a bunch of stuff, but I end up mostly just looking at things and getting inspiration from them. And I'm always drawn to the inks and there wasn't a ton of ink vendors this year. I was hoping to actually buy some more exclusive inks, but being the person I am, I wasn't very good at sourcing those out. Um, I'm a bit of an introvert and there was just so many people and I just found it kind of overwhelming to look for exclusive things. I talked to a couple of vendors. I met some really lovely people there. There was a table that had uh, Rob from Rob's Penworks and Michaela from White Bear Pens. Uh, they were sharing a table because their aesthetic is very similar. They have a lot of beautiful sort of shimmery, glittery pens and uh, they were that, that table was really approachable. I really liked their vibe and um, I actually connected with Rob on Instagram afterwards and he asked me what he thought of the, what I thought of the table and I said that you know I'm an introvert and I found it you know really approachable and he said that they had put out stickers and they had like a stamp as well but I was able to trade stickers with him he had a sticker and uh, so did Michaela and so I gave them one of my little sticker packs I, I created these little sticker packs to give out to my friends at the pen show this year and I took it as a little challenge to make a SF pen show sticker and came up with a theme of this uh, nib with the San Francisco bridge so I thought that was really fun and then I started thinking about other sort of pen nib designs so I created this little set of pen nibs and popped that little SF one in the corner. Uh, I actually ended up creating a bigger sheet for my sticker shop from these because uh, people seem to really like them so I have put those in my sticker shop as well so they're available to buy and I also put in a little sample of my sample vial labels. Uh, so these are really handy if you want to label your samples. It has a sticker for the top as well as uh, the label around the middle so you can name your ink. So yeah I just thought that would be a fun little gift. And I decided that I was going to give them out to my friends as well as uh, vendors that I interacted with or bought something from because uh, they work really, really hard. And I just thought it would be really nice to sort of give them a little surprise too because we're all walking around buying all this stuff and having a really fun time and they're working their butts off. Yeah, so that was a really lovely interaction with Rob and Michaela. I will be sure to put their info in the description below if you want to check their beautiful pens out. So let's get on to looking at the stuff that I bought. Okay, so the first couple of things are some paper goods that I got. I got this beautiful little notebook, uh, the Robiki note from Yamamoto Paper. They had a ton of interesting papers at their uh, booth and this one just really took my fancy. I really loved this design. I saw them last year and I didn't end up getting one just because I didn't really need any notebooks and I don't really need any notebooks now either. It's just such a beautiful design. They had about maybe 12 different designs on here and the owner was talking to me about how they make the paper on here. It's a wax paper. So he said as you use it, it gets sort of patinaed and crumpled. You know, like when you get a baked good and it sort of crinkles the bag and it leaves those little lines. So he said that that's what's going to happen. Uh, with that and it has this beautiful sort of very very subtle dot grid in here on cream paper and I tested it here with my um, Bennu Euphoria and it's a pretty wet pen and it didn't bleed through it does have some show through but uh, definitely fountain pen friendly so that was just a lovely little memento that I got from the show and I will probably put this in my drawing kit for just quick notes and uh, little memories maybe I'm not I haven't tested it with watercolor yet so I'm not sure if it'll hold up to that but just a lovely little design it's beautiful and then i got this other notebook uh, from usari which is a grid notebook they had a couple of different styles uh, they might have had different sizes as well but this is the a5 and it's a kind of a giant block of paper here but uh, the paper is quite thick in and the grid is pretty pronounced so i wasn't sure if i was going to like it but i kind of just like the idea of it for um sort of experimenting in. Uh, I, here I've put some of my stickers that I was playing around with. I was just writing up some stuff but it's very heavyweight and it's fountain pen friendly to a point but because it is so thick uh, some ink tends to bleed a little bit on it. I think I actually used my Bennu Astrogem that has a medium nib and was really wet and that ended up feathering a little bit. 
But um, yeah, these are the, my little stickers that I just popped up in my shop. And <laughs> so I actually, you know, t put a ton on this page. You probably wouldn't want to put that many on one page, but it was kind of fun experimenting with that. And I just wanted to use this because the grid is so pronounced. So I wanted to stick it on here so you can see the transparency on those stickers. But yeah, I really enjoy this paper. I'm going to have fun just playing around with it. And mostly I just want to use it for note taking and experimenting with different inks. So far I've been really enjoying it and I just like the, the weight of the paper. And the next thing I picked up was this three pen koozie from Rickshaw. They had a ton of different stuff there. They had some wonderful SF pen show themed goodies and um, some really nice ones by Abby C and uh, Job's Journals. And they had designed these cool products. Um, but I had already actually just bought my Sinclair a couple of weeks before. So I wasn't really in the market for anything, but just like a little pen holder for my Cavecos. So I picked up this one uh, and I just thought the colorway was really beautiful. Uh, so this pen here, this is not a Caveco. This is actually a pen that I got off eBay uh, a couple of months ago and it's actually made out of Ultum or polyethamide. And I'm not sure if they can use the word Ultum because it, I'm not sure if it's copyrighted or not, but it was advertised as a titanium alloy and polyethamide pen. So I was really interested in seeing what this material was like. I have always been drawn to the Galen Leather Caveco that is like a transparent whiskey brown color. So um, I thought this was really cool. And it has this weird little thing on the bottom that apparently you can break glass with. I think it's maybe like a sort of utility pen or something like that. But I was super drawn to it. I just thought it was really lovely. The section is maybe a little bit thinner than a Caveco, but very, very similar. And it actually has a Schmidt nib on it, which is a really good nib. So I've really been enjoying that. So I wanted to get a case to be able to put that in, plus a couple of my Cavecos or even my Twisby Mini. And um, this was perfect. All right, so let's take a look at the inks I got. I thought I would be coming back with a couple more exclusive inks, but uh, I just didn't manage to get my hands on them, but I did get one and that was from Kiwi Inks. Uh, every year they create an ink for the show and this one is a really high sheening sort of wine red, burgundy red, and it has an amazing green sheen on it. And you can see it really, really well in the text. It's very, very apparent in the text. In the swatch, you can see it sort of collected at the top where I laid it down really thick. It does dry, it's not sticky or anything, but yeah, super high sheening ink. I also picked up another couple of Andorillium inks. Last year I also got a couple as well and I really enjoyed them. So this year I got the Cuttlefish Brown, which I nearly got last year because I love brown inks. And this one is a super rich sort of mm, green leaning brown really. It's, it's kind of a weird muddy brown and it's very dark, uh, but you can see beautiful shading in here and it has a bit of sheen. It's a really interesting ink. And then I also picked up the Pompadour Katinga Burgundy, which uh, I thought was a little bit darker when I tried it out. Uh, when I got it home, it is a lot more sort of pink leaning and a bit lighter, but I still really love it. And it has beautiful shading. You can see at the top of the swatch, there's a little bit of sheen there. It doesn't come through much in the text, but the shading is absolutely gorgeous. And this next ink I picked up from the Van Ness table. I actually went there with the intention of trying to get some Inkibara inks because they're kind of hard to track down and I know that Van Ness carries them but uh, they didn't bring any to the show and they said that I would just have to go online and order those. So that was a bit of a disappointment, but I couldn't leave without getting an ink. So I ended up getting this beautiful Van Diemen's Greek Heroes uh, Alexander. And I have similar inks to this already because I'm really drawn to the brown inks with the shimmer. It's very similar to Coco Shimmer by Diamine. It's a little less chocolatey, but it's really beautiful. And I can't wait to put this in a pen because I think the shimmer is going to look really gorgeous. And the last ink I picked up was a Vinta ink that was a collaboration with Enigma Stationery. And I ended up talking to them for a while. Um, they were really lovely people. The owner of Enigma wanted to make sure that I knew that this was a shimmer ink because some people, he said, don't like shimmer inks and they didn't realize it was. And I was like, oh yeah, I love shimmer inks. You can just not shake it and use it as a regular ink or you can shake it up and use the shimmer. So I never really get deterred by buying shimmer inks. And uh, I ended up talking to them a little bit and he was telling me how they first started off as like making blanks during the pandemic. And now they've become this sort of stationary store and they were super excited and proud. It's just a really lovely interaction. So um, yeah, I love this ink for that too. It has this vibrancy. It's just sort of a really beautiful tropical blue with a little lean to the green and uh, the shimmer is stunning. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. I have this actually in my Twisby Mini and you can just see it sloshing around in there. It's a rose gold mini 
and uh, absolutely gorgeous and really good writer very visible for such a light ink um, yeah really glad I picked this one up so I made a couple of sample bottles of these inks and I think I'm gonna do like a little giveaway seeing so I still have a couple of the uh, stickers that I made for the SF pen show uh, I thought maybe I could give those away if anybody uh, wanted to enter a giveaway for that so I think I'll post it on my Instagram It'll just be like this little packet of goodies here, plus some inks. Maybe I'll throw in some more sticker sheets from my shop. Anyway, I'll put all the details on an Instagram post. I'll put it in the description below. Um, yeah, I just thought it would be really fun if you didn't get to go to the show. This is a cute little memento uh, that you may want. And I also have a couple of those bigger nib stickers left. So if you're ordering something from my shop and you want one, just put it in the notes and I will send you out one while supplies last. So yeah, I'll again, I'll put all the details below. Okay, so this is the exciting part, the pens. So this pen I actually bought before the pen show. I was really interested in finding a pen with this resin. This is the Strata Quartz resin. And I think last year Leonardo and Stilo and Stile did a collaboration using this resin and I fell in love with it. And I've been sort of stalking makers that have been using this resin for a while. And I thought I would just reach out to Bone Crusher 7 because I really liked the look of their uh, Velma model. And so I reached out to them because they had it advertised on their website, but they didn't have any available. So I asked whether they would be making any more ever and whether there was some coming in. And James replied to me and said that he had actually just ordered three blanks of this and that they would be coming in soon. And did I want to pre-order it? And so I totally jumped on it and I pre-ordered it without even seeing the pen because I... I knew the model and um, I knew that I would just love this resin and he actually sent me photos of the first two that he made out of the blanks and the first one that he sent over didn't have a ton of different variation in the actual resin so I asked if I could see the second one and this this is the second one and I just thought it was way more interesting so uh, I went ahead and asked him to use that one and he wrote back and said that he was trying to make the pen a little more matte apparently he had made some matte pens and the feedback he had gotten was that it was more like a satin finish and to be honest I would have loved a satin finish or this matte finish it, it didn't really matter to me I knew that I just didn't want a super glossy one uh, so this turned out absolutely perfect I love how he finished it it is really really smooth the threads on this model are crazy I'm not sure how it even put goes together they're so low profile and they're really smooth when I first got the pen it was kind of hard to open and close because I think just that it had been nearly finished but now that I've been using it for a while I have no issues with it opening or closing so yeah I was so grateful to James to be able to make this for me I absolutely love it uh, it is a beautiful model I'll put all of his information in the description if you want to check his uh, website out um, yeah so the second pen that I got was the Pilot Vanishing Point in Black Carbonesque so I have been wanting this pen for quite a while. I love the idea of it being a retractable pen to use for note taking for work. Uh, I know it's not much effort to uncap and cap a pen, but if you're sitting there taking notes, it can dry out. So I loved the idea of this capless pen. And Manda had let me try out this pen when we got together for an ink swap. I'll, I'll put her link to her YouTube down below. Uh, but she let me borrow hers for a little bit to write with and I just really loved it. It's kind of bouncy. It was really smooth. It was easy to use and I was just kind of sold on it. So I actually was able to purchase this from Pen Chalet with a little bit of credit that I got from people using my, it's not really an affiliate link. It's more like a referral link. So I had a little bit of that. So it brought the price down a little bit. I felt like it was um, quite an affordable purchase in the end. And I just really loved this finish. So when I went to the pen show, I looked at all the different finishes on this pen, but I just love the design on this. You can see these little specks. I believe it's like a black lacquer over maybe metal or I remember watching a review when someone said it was like fabric that had been lacquered over uh, but I couldn't really find much information about it when I even when I went to the pilot site but I just really loved the sophistication of this pen and just the classic look of it and I thought it's going to be a bit of a workhorse so yeah I just really wanted to try it out so thank you for using my referral link that was really awesome to be able to afford to get this and I am excited to use it so this last pen was a surprise to me. I actually won this in an Instagram giveaway. Uh, the giveaway was being run by Alan from Addicted to Pens and I saw it come up in my feed but I also got tagged from Stationary Dumpling. So thank you Stationary Dumpling. Uh, so I entered the competition and I ended up being randomly chosen to win this pen and it is a super cute little pocket pen in the blank Autumn Abalone. And I actually chatted a little bit with him on Instagram when I won the pen because 
I just wanted to understand a little bit more about him and his company. And he says he actually pours all of his resins himself. Uh, he said sometimes his wife helps him with the color choices and stuff, but he really enjoys the process of pouring. And as he's pouring, he's sort of envisioning what the pen is going to look like. And uh, he says like from tight swells to long swoops and everything in between, <laughs> that's what he said. So I love that creative process. He really enjoys actually every part of making the pen. And I think his son Tristan actually pours blanks too. He does more of the glitter infused stuff. So a little bit different to Alan's style, but I really love the idea that it's sort of this family affair and that they're um, all working together on this project. It's a really nice vibe. Yeah, and he also said that he can do sort of custom pens for people, which I found really interesting. So I think they have three different style pens and he said he can pour any color combo that you want. So I'll put all of his info in the description so you can check him out and maybe get a pen of your own. Yeah, so back to the beautiful pen that I got. Um, it is a super rich combination of a vibrant sort of pumpkin orange with swirls of dark dark chocolatey brown and some cream in there as well and there's sort of mica and shimmer throughout the whole thing so it's very chatoyant and I was super excited because you can switch out the nibs on this this is just an FPR uh, nib with a Yovo housing so I can switch it out and put my SD Journalist nib in there or the FPR Ultraflex uh, so that was really exciting. It also takes an international size cartridge, but here you can see me putting the little Caveco converter in. As you can see, it pushes the um, pump a little bit halfway through, so you could use it. Uh, it will fit, but I would have to make sure that I filled it only halfway. So I'm probably just going to use this cartridge and fill it up. And um, I'm not sure if you can eye drop it. I'll have to ask Alan to see whether you can. It seems like you could because it's all solid. There's no metal bits or anything. Uh, but I prefer having a cartridge in there just so I can see how much ink I have. Otherwise, you kind of got to risk opening it to check it. Yeah, so I'm excited to try this pen out. And I just wanted to thank Alan again for doing this giveaway. I think he does them quite often. So check out his Instagram and his website. I'll put everything in the description below. So apart from all the wonderful things that I bought and sort of walking around the pen show, I also took one class on Saturday and it was the sketch noting class by Kate Rudder. And this was a super fun class. It was really fast paced. Uh, we learned a bunch about sort of taking notes visually and using icons and text to stand out, highlighting certain elements. And I was trying to take notes from when she was talking about taking notes. <laughs> so I was trying to use her techniques as we were doing it. And uh, it was a really great class. It was a two hour class, but it really felt like one hour. But uh, it was really fun. I am actually a web designer, graphic designer in my work life and my personal life. I just wanted to use this so, sort of for visual journaling. And I just left the session feeling sort of inspired and encouraged to take notes more effectively in a way that I can visually understand them afterwards. And that's kind of what it was all about. It's just sort of creating your own little shortcuts to information so that you can you know, relearn it and rediscover it later on. So yeah, if you're interested in anything, I'll put all of her info in the description. Um, I thought it was really worthwhile, so you might want to check it out too. And apart from all the pen show stuff, uh, the main reason actually I wanted to go to the pen show this year was to catch up with people and hang out. And I was able to go out to lunch with Maria. I'll put her YouTube link below. And she's such a lovely person. And so we got to chill out for a minute and have lunch in and out together. And for dinner, I actually met up with a bunch of people from Simone's Discord channel. So I will put all of their information in the description below. I don't want to list everybody out in case I forget somebody, but I just, it was so wonderful to meet up with these people. They're all so genuine and beautiful and sort of inclusive. It was just a really fun night and we <laughs> talked about pens and we looked at everybody's purchases. It was so exciting. And we also just sort of hung out and talked about other stupid things. So it was a really fun uh, experience and I'm so glad that I went and I hope to be able to stay in contact with these people and catch up again. It was really fun. Um, so. Yeah. Oh, and I got this little sticker sheet from Christy, uh, Snacky Wordsworth. <laughs> she said she didn't get time to cut them, but I really like them. Like, I think I'm going to use them sort of like washi tape or something. So thank you, Christy. And uh, yeah, I think that's it, guys. Um, I hope this was fun or informative or something. <laughs> you got something out of it. And uh, thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.